you giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in the business Not because they wanna do it, just because they heard it pays And who the fuck wants to be poor, no one, that's how we've been raised Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shit how you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Guys, we're going to keep this very brief. I'm going to have Gary York on as well. We hit on a very good point the other day when we were having the discussion over a book that I have out on the market. It's called Inmate Manipulation Decoded. There's a quote in the book that says, if staff only maintains the proper boundaries because they fear the consequences of their actions, their resistance will be weak when the consequences become minimized or perceived to be non-existent. And I just want to explore what this quote means because it's very, very important that we understand that. And I thought that we could have Gary York, uh, the YouTuber. He's an influencer. He has a channel called True Prison Stories. Uh, hey, Gary York, you mind introducing yourself to our audience again? Hello, everybody. I'm Gary York, uh, YouTube True Prison Stories. Uh, retired 28.8 years corrections, state and uh, county jail. Uh, two years retired now, but I uh, keep up with the uh, updates and I write articles for a few places here and there on prison issues. And my book Inside the Inner Circle has some true prison stories and it's floating around right now uh, on some social sites. You also have Corruption Behind Bars as well. Two very, very good books. Thank you. Yes, Corruption Behind Bars was my first one. Uh, my second one's in the top 100 in two categories today right now as we speak yeah very big fan me, me and you go back many years uh the reason why we first met was because you were the author uh and uh, you came yes. on to my radio show discussing your book and uh again guys if you get a chance it's just a phenomenal read both books uh inside the inner circle and corruption behind bars hey gar i want to keep this dialogue quick i know you have something to do so have you ever worked with somebody let's say you, again from my experience let's say i'm working at a female facility I'm working with, let's say, another male officer. I mean, it could be a female officer, but let's just say for this scenario, it's another man, a male officer. And all of a sudden you have this female inmate that comes by that's not that bad to look at, let's just say. And the male officer says, nah, that's not worth getting in trouble over. Do you think that's a good motivation that will maintain proper conduct with that individual? It worries me when somebody even mentions the fact oh, that's not worth getting in trouble over because that statement tells me that in the mind of that officer, they've already thought about, hey, I, I like the way that inmate looks. Uh, man, that, that might be all right or something like that. Uh, already tells me that the officer's on the wrong mindset. Uh, you know, we're here for care, custody, and control, and we're not here to even think about being a friend with an inmate, much less think about sexual thoughts with an inmate. Yeah, I, I like how you said that. It's like they've already thought it in their mind. And I want people to know, especially in the book we have out, uh, Inmate Manipulation Decoded, the inmates try to build a level of tr uh, trust with you to minimize those consequences or what is perceived to be consequences. You know, like basically you could trust me, I'll never report it. So when they're able to make those consequences non-existent then when you're thinking man i would hit that but it's not worth getting in trouble that inmate has already lifted the consequences behind that behavior so now your defense the reason why you wouldn't touch this inmate is gone correct gary i mean i mean if i'm going to sit there as an inmate the one thing i'm going to do is i want to build a level of trust with you that in your mind per, um minimizes the consequences or makes the consequences non-existent. Now, if I'm able to do that, that defense of, man, she's not worth getting in trouble over, he's not worth getting in trouble over, the defense is gone. And don't think, and don't think that those thoughts cannot make you slip and fall. Real quick, I just did a video that's going to come out later on uh, um, I Married My Favorite Inmate. Um, just one quick example, a lieutenant who hated inmates, hated inmates, talked about how much he hated inmates. He slipped and fell because he let these thoughts come into his head 
and he ended up having an affair with a female officer. Now, you know, right from wrong, you know, you're not supposed to do that. How did it start? Probably with that thought you just mentioned earlier, Anthony. Wow. If that wasn't an inmate, I'd hit that. Yeah, you know what? That's exactly. Can I tell you something? That's exactly why I titled that that. Because technically what you're saying is, and, and I agree, is she's not worth getting in trouble over. Technically what you're saying is if you if you wouldn't get in trouble, then you would do it. And in my opinion, and in my book, we even talk about external versus internal uh, responses. That's an external response. That's like, you know, putting it on the, you know, the, the rules, the, the policies that are saying, well, it's not worth it because I don't want to get in trouble. Technically, just so we make sure we give out the right advice is, you should know that that's not what you're there for, that you're a professional, that you have, uh, you know, value in what you do and the work you're performing. So when someone says, you know, what do you think about that inmate? It's not about it's not worth it because I don't want to get in trouble. It's like, you know what? My job is to do this. This is my professional, my, my professional function. And at the end of the day, that's not even coming across in my mind, regardless if there was consequences or not. The fact is I do the right thing because that's what's in me. That's why I took the job and that's what I promised to the public, to the agency, to my peers. That's what I was, that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, Hey Gary, you have anything you'd like to say in closing? I just want to say, don't fall into that trap. You know, that everything you've talked about and I've talked about just now falls under morals and ethics and, taking the oath to do your job uh, and, and, and things like that. So if you get a thought like that in your head, quickly erase it and quickly ask yourself, what can I do to get out of this mindset? It's totally wrong and it has nothing to do with my job. So just try to keep that in mind. Yeah, I think that's just, just great advice. I wanted to get out there because I'm sure we've worked next to people who have said, man, she's not worth getting in trouble over. And it's funny is we have to ask ourselves, what are they not saying right mm -hmm. now? What just came across that they didn't say? Uh, and uh, just again, great dialogue. Guys, if you get a chance, the link to my book is in the description. Also, uh, Gary's two books, Inside the Inner Circle, Corruption Behind Bars, also available on Amazon. As always, guys, your show is here. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe.